Good morning. Um, this week I am working on 13th Age, uh, published by Pelgrain. Um, this isn't actually what I set out to start working on, but it's just one of those things. Uh, I originally started to work on Dungeon World, a game I've been think, uh, meaning to create solo rules for for a while. And in doing my research for it, I came across 13th Age. Now, when you, let's say you create a wizard in uh, Dungeon World, your wizard is the wizard. There is only one, it is you. Now, in 13th Age, uh, they have this uh, sort of feature called One Unique Thing. So when you create a character, you come up with one unique thing um, about your character. That, yeah, and it could be that you know you are the uh, the reincarnated. Um, you, uh, you could be re reincarnation of the Dalai Lama for all um, for all it cares. Uh, if I open that um, up, you, I'll show you a few examples. Um, they use these icons, and icons are, um, they can be, uh, let's say, there's a gold dragon, um, is an icon, there's, a, you know, the, the head druid is an icon, these are kind of the, um, in Lord of the Rings, uh, Middle Earth, Sauron would be an icon, and Elrond would probably be an icon. You know, these are the the super you know, top flight um, NPCs that are you know, the major players in the game. They often act as patrons for the uh, adventurers, the player characters. Um, so they. Between these two, they create quite an interesting um, set of tools for as quest givers. Um, now that one unique thing, um, these are some examples from a uh, 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 a con in 2013 and there's things like frostbitten a wizard covered with a thin layer of ice due to an accident during wizard school uh, the only elf to, um, to be alive when the wizard king fell the wizard king is a historical character and also happened to have fought on his size um, yeah, so you can uh, literally make your character as unique as you would possibly like they, the the one unique thing isn't something you would min max to try and get a um, some kind of advantage, but it is the kind of thing that the game master would integrate into the campaign. Um, this is one of the nice things about Thirteenth Age is most of the campaign is undefined at the start of play. And as you bring in the one unique thing for each player character, these fill in a lot of the blanks. You know, if you decide that you're the only living gnome, then you've literally just removed the gnome um, uh, race from the campaign. You, know, you you can do something like that as long as the GM is good for it. Then uh, you know, that is not a problem. Um, now, their backgrounds mechanic is very, very similar to the Castles and Crusades Siege Engine. Um, Castles and Crusades um, used a system of um, prime stats. Um, so if you're a fighter, your prime one of your um, three prime stats would be strength. Any strength-based task, um, you would basically roll a um, difficulty check um, 
there, there are two levels of difficulty check, those for prime stats and those for not. So your fighter trying to push over a giant um, stone statue would be using strength as their prime. If they were trying to solve a crossword puzzle, then that probably wouldn't be a prime um, tribute. So it'd be a harder uh, difficulty. 13th Age, they use these backgrounds. So you can set up any background you like for your character. You know, if you're playing a fighter, you could say that you are a, um, your background is, is a gladiator. So if there was a challenge that, um, let's say you, it came down to betting odds, um, you could say, well, my background as a gladiator, we were always around the um, the betting side of the the gambling that went on on the gladiatorial games. And um, so you could apply your bonus from your background because your character would know something about it. And that would affect the um, difficulty factor. So there's kind of crossovers. I it, There's a little bit of crossover with Castles and Crusades. There's a little bit of crossover with the way that every character is unique in Dungeon World. Uh, the game is very, very narrative, um, which is uh, I like. Um, so, yes, yeah, somehow I got diverted from Dungeon World to 13th Age. And so this is what I'm reading this week. And my test character is a cleric. Now... There are no monk characters, uh, character classes in 13th Age. And it, it uses feats, and there seems to be a heavy dose of D&D 3rd Edition in it. I've never played D&D 3rd Edition, I was familiar with the idea of feats. Now, I think that I can build a monk from a basic um, cleric by picking the right feats. So that is half of the challenge here to see whether, um, for my solo character, whether I can actually customize the, um, the character to be exactly what I want to be without breaking any of the rules as written. So that's the challenge here. Um, it's well worth looking up the game. Um, you know, as a PDF, this is an interesting thing. Um, it's a 300 page um, core book. It's a mithril bestseller. Um, it's got you know, a proper uh, publisher behind it. It's got some big names uh, in the writing. Um, so, you know, these guys have got a huge pedigree, but there's no print on demand. I'm not entirely sure why it's even got the staff pick um, sort of seal of approval. Um, yeah, it's a, a good looking game, um, but I don't know why it doesn't have um, a print on demand. But yeah, this is what I'm looking at um, this week. It, and you will see I, i'm working in note form at the moment um you should start to, st to see some stuff on the blog about it um probably towards the end of the week uh it's quite a quick read um i like books with lots and lots of art and um short pages so that's it this week. This is what I'm working on. Um, it was not my intention, but there you go. These things happen. Uh, I'll give you an update on the blog uh, later this week.